You're more selfish than you think. And in this video, I'll prove it to you. To start, let me ask you two questions. Who was the last person you helped and what were your motivations for doing it? Almost all of us are quick to assume that when we help others, it's for purely selfless reasons. But this assumption was recently challenged for me and I no longer think this is always the case. In fact, I think most of the time it isn't. For instance, let's say the last person you helped was a family member. Then are you sure that you didn't help them because you thought it was expected of you? Or maybe you helped a friend. In that case, can you say for sure that you didn't help them for the benefit of the friendship and by extension yourself? Are you sure that you didn't help your partner because you want them to like you and you desire their approval? Or that you didn't help that coworker because you don't know how to say no? If in fact you did it for any of these reasons, you're not a bad person. You're just a human and as humans, we're biologically wired to look out for ourselves first, which as I'll explain later in this video is actually a good thing, or at least it can be. Similarly, transactional interactions and relationships aren't inherently bad as long as they're equitable and both sides from their point of view are gaining or losing equally. I got the idea for this video from watching an interview of Hamza, and even though I don't agree with all that he says or represents or how he communicates a lot of the time, I do think that what he said in this particular part of the interview was pretty accurate in a lot of cases. Whether we know it or not, admit it or not, a lot of the things we do are transactional. You usually help others not really to help them, but because of either or both of these things. You think it's your duty of some sort, moral, legal, civic, work, filial, cultural, etc. Or you want to raise your unspoken social score, your influence, status, public perception, reputation, social credibility, whatever you want to call it. You're doing it so that other people will think you're a good person, or at least so that you'll have evidence to call and see yourself as I'm not saying that it's bad to have a positive perception of yourself or for others to agree. I'm just saying that you should always question and deeply examine your intentions and motivations because we're really good at tricking ourselves into thinking things that aren't actually true, as you might have seen when you answered my questions at the beginning of this video. And without awareness, you can quickly find yourself on a slippery slope. For example, I know most of us don't have the level of status, wealth, and influence as Bill Gates and a lot of other ultra-rich public figures, but how do you think they got a lot of that status, wealth, and influence? By donating to charity. How are you going to turn this dude, a greedy, selfish capitalist, into a generous, likable billionaire perceived as a force for good? One word, charity. See, people don't hate billionaires because they have all this money. No, they hate billionaires because they don't share any of that money. They hoard it to themselves. But take that same billionaire and have him give a homeless dude $10,000. And I bet that that homeless dude is going to be his biggest fan. That is the power of charity. Though on the surface, it seems selfless. They're not really doing these things because they care. They're doing it to gain influence, control, and power, which they can use to further improve their public image and gain even more influence, control, and power. Like I said, I know this is an extreme example, especially for the negative side of the argument, but I wanted to mention it because, because of its scale and extent, it's obvious that they're doing these things not for public benefit, but for private gain. And once you're able to observe this in someone else, then you might more easily be able to observe it in yourself, even though it's more subtle because it's on a smaller scale. If you still don't think that you at least sometimes want to help others for ulterior motives or personal gain, then let me ask you this. Do you ever feel stress, overwhelm, guilt, shame, worry? Yes, these are all natural human emotions, but they're all also dead giveaways for ulterior motivation. Being a good person shouldn't make you feel bad. So if it does, then something isn't lining up. Most likely your intentions, goals, values, actions, and or authenticity, because emotions don't lie. But I'm not here to judge, because I felt these things too, and I admit that I knowingly and unknowingly do things transactionally. But like I said, I don't think that transactional interactions and relationships are necessarily bad or something to avoid. Transaction has become a dirty word, but I don't think it has to be one. For example, I bet most, if not all of you, would agree that the golden rule of treating others the way you want to be treated is solid advice. 
Well, this adage is transactional hurt. If I respect you, then naturally I expect you to respect me. If I take time out of my day to help you, then the least I expect is a thank you. If you like a product, that, then it's only fair to pay some money for the time, effort, and resources that went into making it and the value that it provides you. Entire countries are built on transactional systems. It's what capitalism is based on. And capitalism, when pure, is a fair system. You get what you give. That's what karma and justice are based on too. So the point of this video isn't to make you feel bad for doing things transactionally, but rather just to lift the veil that blinds a lot of us into thinking that all the good we do is for purely altruistic reasons, which is simply not the case. And that's okay. It's okay to put yourself first. This is actually, in my opinion, the highest form of altruism, because though counterintuitive, it's the most effective and valuable thing that you can do to help the world. We see this in a lot of aspects of life. It's the oxygen mask analogy. It's filling your cup first so that you can fill others with your overflow. It's raising your vibration so that the worlds can be raised along with it. And it works. If you follow this route, then changing others will require a lot less energy and effort because they'll see the change in you and naturally be inclined to ask you how you achieved it and how they could do the same. Like in business or with making friends, you first have to work on yourself, on making yourself interesting and valuable. The crowd, the change in your external environment, and the positive reputation will then follow. So hopefully this video has inspired you to re-examine the actions you take day to day. If you do, I think you'll find out whether you really do them because you want to, because you find some sort of intrinsic value in them, or because of sense of duty, or to better yourself. Doing things for the second reason, as I've already said, isn't inherently bad, but I do think that it's freeing and empowering to be aware of everything you do and your motivations for doing it. Doing things for the last reason doesn't necessarily have to have negative consequences either, but there's two options that fall under this category. The first is that you're bettering yourself for you, and the second is that you're doing it for others. The first of these options isn't necessarily bad as long as you don't let it get to your head, thus converting it to the second option, which doesn't necessarily have to have negative consequences external to you either, but which will always be burdensome to you and limit your liberties, even if you're aware of it, because you'll be chained to your identity, to who you think you are or who you think you should be. Does this make you a bad person? No, but you also won't ever be able to experience true liberation and peace, because identities are made up of boxes and labels, and boxes and labels are difficult to escape once you find yourself in them. If you like this video, then you might also like the video that I'll link in the end card. It delves a little deeper into why it's actually a good thing to mostly only care about ourselves and those close to us. Before you leave though, leave a comment down below letting me know if you agree. Are most of the things we do secretly or openly transactional? And is that okay? I would love for this to be a space where we could all share with each other, so I really look forward to reading what you guys have to say. Also, if you like this video, then hit that like button. And if you really liked it, then subscribe so you can catch all my videos as soon as I drop them and so that they can reach more people. As for Inago, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.